today, what couple, gay or straight, would think that they, you know, especially gay, would think they needed a documentary to show that they were married? I mean, the world, the, the pace at which the world has changed on this issue is unprecedented. Um, and I think, frankly, it's in large part because of the woman sitting yeah, right next yeah. to me. I had never been out on a Saturday night that, it, unless it was with a boy or a man. And uh, the, uh, so, uh, so what really happened is that, that when I did see people, two women together on a Saturday night out, I, 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 I was so jealous. And I, her, and I finally said to him, uh, honey, you deserve more and I need something else. And we parted enormously good friends. However, I always, I, except for my 70th birthday, we did, we did not, we were not in touch at all. My 70th birthday, he called and said, I still love you, okay? Uh, but he had, a, he had a beautiful wife and beautiful kids and, a, and exactly the life he should have had. I'm gonna give you the legal relevance now. I'm just gonna read you a chapter from the, the book, Then Comes Marriage. Yeah. Um, during a conference call between our team and the lawyers for the House Republicans on May 5th, one of their lawyers asked us for document, documentation regarding Edie's first marriage. Really, I thought? This is how you plan to defend DOMA? Apparently, they believe that the fact that Edie had once briefly been married to a man showed that being gay was a choice. I knew, however, that the details of Edie's first marriage were actually a very powerful argument for our side. In fact, I was so thrilled that the House Republicans wanted to get into this issue that I actually did my own version of the Saturday Night Live Church Ladies Superior dance with my colleagues as soon as the call ended. Uh, why, of course? Because if Edie had had a choice about being gay, she'd still be married to that guy, right? Yeah. She didn't have a choice. Yeah. So we were pretty thrilled. I think that Kim Davis is the greatest gift to the gay community in years. Um, I, I, I'm going to send her a big thank you card. I'm serious. I mean. I think you have to say who she is, though. I, oh, I think every, everyone knows. So Kim yeah, Davis yeah, is, yeah, the, is yeah. the clerk in uh, Kentucky who, tried, who took the position that her religious beliefs did not allow her to comply with the decisions of the United States Supreme Court. Um, why do I think she's such a gift? First of all, her legal arguments are ridiculous. Uh, public servants can't decide which parts of the Constitution they agree with and don't. And every court, even Justice Kennedy, in a speech at Harvard Law School a couple days ago, said he should, she should resign. If that's her position, she should resign, number one. Number two... Look at the people at her rallies. You know, they're wearing white robes. They have, conf they have swastikas on their shirts. They're carrying Confederate flags. I mean, nothing could be a better manifestation of how hateful many people are on the other side. And then I just have to say, they're kind of the icing on the cake, which is she went ahead and lied about a private meeting with the Pope. Uh, I'm not Catholic, but I have to assume that it's probably not a good thing to lie about meeting with the Pope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there was just a poll that came out today where the numbers have changed so that now today 58% of Americans believe that no government official should be able to refuse to marry a gay couple uh, because of their religious beliefs. So that's where we are.